Hi, my name is Lily Rivas and I am a customer success specialist for Let's Go Learn. Welcome to our tutorial on how to use our tools for remote learning. Today, I will be giving you an overview of what we do at Let's Go Learn. We will go over how to use our blended learning assignment tool and how to progress monitor using the teacher interface. Before I begin, I want to tell you a little about myself. Before joining the team here at Let's Go Learn, I was an inner city public school teacher for 16 years. I worked for a district that adopted our tools many years prior, so I have about six years experience of using Let's Go Learn tools in the classroom. In my opinion, it was one of the only tools that I used that really gave me a clear picture as to how my students were performing in foundational math and reading, which in turn helped me help them. So I'm sure you're wondering how you are going to possibly fill in student learning gaps remotely. Well, we have multiple ways of getting that done if you're using our tools. You'll have the ability to keep up with your school's pacing guide and have control of what your students are learning. Or you can simply automate the instruction based on what your students need. And you'll have the ability to monitor progress using our tools. If you're familiar with what our company does, you'll understand that, or you, you already know, that we are a data-driven, personalized learning company. Um, our platform begins with a diagnostic test, and depending on which test you're using, we have a, a DORA, which is a foundational reading test. We have ADAM, which is a foundational math test. And then we have access to DOMA pre-algebra and DOMA algebra, which are other diagnostic tools for older math students. So as soon as kids are done testing, we prescribe the personalized learning path. We provide a, many reports that can help you, you know, if you're actually in the classroom, monitor your whole group instruction, small group or individualized instruction. But we also have the ability, you also have the ability to enroll your kids on automated paths for uh, ELA Edge and for math as well. So what sets us apart from other companies is the fact that we are a company that's created for educators by educators. Um, and we're using true diagnostic tools which really tell you why students are performing the way they're performing and how, what steps you need to take to be able to help them continue to develop. Um, if you are familiar with a you know, benchmark test, for example, or midterm, file, et cetera, you know, you're going to get information that students are working on grade level, above grade level, or below, but obviously this is not information, not enough information if you're really trying to fill in those learning gaps, especially as kids are getting older. So what we're doing at Let's Go Learn is identifying student zone of proximal development. If you are familiar with this term, you'll understand that that is a point at which students can um, learn content with a little guidance, with a little help from the teacher, with a little help from a program. In our case, we're going to be using our program. By providing a diagnostic adaptive platform, we are able to tell you what students' zones of proximal developments are in all of the different subtests that we are testing for. Um, so by adaptive diagnostic, I mean that if students are answering questions correctly, the questions will get progressively harder. As they're making mistakes, the questions will get progressively easier. And this leveling system will continue to happen until we find that their zones of personal development, which is very unique. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the system, and we're going to begin today um, as we look at our platform um, in the scores and reports tab at the top of the page. We're going to look at Adam, and why we're going to look at Adam is because we have an instructional placement report for every single subtest in math. So when we come to this page, you're going to see a uh, summary score for every single um, domain. In order to dig a little bit deeper and to see those instructional placement reports, you need to access the different domains up top at the, in the middle part of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on numbers and operations. We are in a fake third grade class right now. Um, so the data is a little bit wonky, but um, understand that we are working with uh, hypothetical third graders here. And what you want to have a look at is every single subtest that's assessed has a magnifying glass next to it, which means that we have an instructional placement report for every single skill. So I'm going to go ahead and click on fractions, which is one of the most difficult concepts to learn and to teach. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that fractions instructional placement report. And what we're telling you with this report is a scope and sequence of teaching uh, fractions from, uh, from bottom up. So the bottom being the easy skills all the way to the top of the skill of, of the most difficult skill, which would be adding and subtraction fractions with unlike denominators. So that information is all available there. 
Um, and what we're doing here is basically telling you what your student's zones of proximal development are. As you scroll to the right of the page, you get an approximate grade level for what, where that skill is taught. So the lowest level skill is taught in a, at a high first grade level. And these kiddos here, even though it's a third grade class, remember, are only able, are only ready to learn this, which is identifying fractions using manipulatives as part of a whole. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that group and say, you know what, if I'm teaching this concept or if they're supposed to be learning this next month, they're gonna need some back work. So you're gonna go ahead and assign to that group and maybe look at these kiddos that are just identifying, uh, just comparing fractions of the same denominator. It's a pretty large number of kids. So I'm gonna go ahead and select those two lowest groups. As you scroll to the top of the page, you're going to see a blue homework icon. If you click on that, you're going to notice that it pushes you into the instruction tab at the right uh, part of the screen there. Uh, and it's going to prompt you to create a lesson. So we're gonna go ahead and call this lesson Fraction Basics. You have the ability to give instructions, so please work on these. You have the ability to schedule a due date if you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and just select next week. <clears throat> And then you're going to be able to select your curriculum. So depending on which programs you have access to, you'll see those drop down. If you have access to ELA Edge, that will be there. Math Edge would be there. If you have any kind of math test, you should have Khan Academy there. And regardless, you should have custom URL, the ability to enter any website or Google Doc, et cetera, um, and then customize it to your students' needs. So that's available there. Because we're working with math, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Math Edge. As I click on Math Edge, you're going to see a search bar appear to your right. We're gonna start searching those tests. Okay, here's early fractions intro. I'm gonna click and drag that lesson there. I'm going to click and drag the other one as well. In the event that you want to preview and see which le what lesson um, you're going to be actually be assigning and making sure that it's a correct content, you can go ahead and click on preview next to the lesson that you think. And you will have the ability to preview the lesson from there. <clears throat> so you're gonna go ahead and, and uh, add whatever it is. If you want to select something from Khan Academy, you can click on Khan Academy. That's going to give you the lesson bank from Khan Academy. I'm gonna go ahead and search for fractions and see, um, identifying unit fractions. Maybe we wanna we want add that. Uh, maybe I want to add a few others. And then as you scroll to the bottom of the page, you're going to see those students that you had already pre-selected using the instructional placement report. In the event that you want to, you realize that you maybe left one of your kiddos off, you can go ahead and select on class, select the correct class. The remaining students will appear at the right-hand side of the screen, and you can just go ahead and click and move them over. Maybe Otto won it. Maybe Laura had a little bit of a hard time the last time you saw her. And then you're going to click Save. Now, because we're working in the instruction tab, in order to access this information, you would have had to go to assignment. So this is where we currently are. I'm just going to re-click it so you see. And what we have here is now your current assignments or any assignments that you've ever um, assigned. And you're going to see an assignment library, which we'll get to in a second. So here is the lesson that I just created now, fraction basics. Please work on these. In order to see if anybody's worked on these lessons, you can have the ability to click on progress. It's going to show you all of the students that you assigned it to. It'll tell you when it was last viewed and it'll tell you if they completed any lessons. So right now, because we just you know, created this, you're going to see, see zero out of three. But as they complete their lessons within that um, cluster, um, you're going to see them here. If you don't remember which lessons you assigned, because I understand how busy you are as teachers, you can click on lessons and that's going to tell you exactly what you assigned to them and what type of lesson it is. Um, so even if you were to assign a custom URL, you would see that as there as well. Also from that area, you have the ability to select actions. So actions, you have three of them. You can edit any course. So you can remove kids. If you click on edit, you can uh, modify the lessons. And then you can also duplicate. So let's say, <clears throat> let's say that, you know, we're progressing throughout the year and you realize that there's a whole other group of kids that had the same problem that these kids had. So you want to reassign the same lessons for those kiddos and go ahead and click on duplicate and you're going to select same lessons with new students. And when you click on that, you're going to see an extra line pop that says copy. 
and you're going to take an action to edit that course. So you're going to see the same lessons that you had already selected, but now you're going to see a blank class. So what you want to do is be able to add new kids. Maybe you want all of these kiddos. So you're going to go ahead and just move them all into that area and click save. If you want to create a fresh assignment, so let's say you just realize that you want to assign something unique to a student, you can go ahead and click on add assignment here and it's going to basically prompt you the same thing. Um, it could be for ELA, it could be for math, you can be your own custom URL, um, Google Doc, Google Survey, I mean, the, the sky's the limit uh, within, within you know, certain parameters here. So then the, the next tab that I want to show you is the assignment library. So within our system, you have the ability to create lesson templates, which is super, super cool. It's a very um, full tool because you can share your template with your entire school. So I'm going to go ahead and create and a, a template would mean something that you're a lesson that you're going to use time and time again. If you have a pro platform for a long time, or if you service different groups of kids that you want to be able to assign it to, you know, sometimes teachers um, have different sections um, that they, the same course, but just different sections. So I'm going to go ahead and create a template. Let's call it, um, let's call this short vowels since we worked with math before. Um, please work on these. You can share it with your, keep it to yourself, or you can actually share it with your entire school. That's entirely up to you. And then you can select your curriculum. We're going to choose ELA edge for right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to search for short vowels. There it is. Maybe I have a custom URL, a Google doc that I want to add here, or maybe something else. Um, let's maybe do maybe letter sounds. You realize, Oh, you know what? They're having a hard time with just overall letter sounds. I'm going to add that lesson as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. So now we have a template. So I know when kids are having a hard time with short vowels and letter sounds, um, I can just reassign it. So you can go ahead in order to assign it to students to use it. You would just click on use and that's going to prompt you to select your kiddos again. So I'm going to go ahead and just select. I want Barry, Inge, Kirk, Margarita, Otto, all of these kiddos over here. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now, if I wanted to use the same template for my other class that I had here in the toggle down Newman kids, I could do that as well. So again, it's super handy for, oh, I didn't enter a, date, a due date. Sometimes it prompts you for the wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that there. And now I have in my assignment library, another lesson. So again, you can preview. If you forget which lessons you assign, you can click on preview and actually view what you assigned. Um, you can delete the template if, you're, if it's no, no longer of use to you. Um, if you wanna look at the district's um, templates, you can look at them there. So this is, you know, if you create a really wow lesson and you just want other people to have access to it, school templates as well. That's all available there. Now, I just want to show you really quickly, every single one of our pages has this glowing red question mark on the right hand side. If you click on that, it's actually going to give you a brief overview into how to use the assignment tool. So pretty much what I'm showing you now that's available here as well. Um, so just showing you that there's you know, a little bit more help there. So the last thing that I want to go over today is how to monitor edge use from comfort of your home or you know, at home office. Um, so you're going to go into your instruction tab and click on edge 2.0. When you do that, you're going to see a series of sub tabs towards the middle of the page. We're going to focus on current course usage. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. When I click on that, you're going to see that a lot of these are say NA, that is because we are looking at two courses together. We're gonna to go ahead and filter that to just look at ELA Edge for now. And when I do that, you're going to see all those columns open up um, so we can look at it separately. So what we're seeing here is all of the current path the student is on. This is all of the information. Now, if you wanna filter, for example, let's say that you're monitoring this on a weekly basis or if your school is asking you to monitor it on a monthly basis, you can filter the date range. So when you click on the little white bar, you can go ahead and toggle it and filter to the right hand side. You can toggle that and just look at the last 30 days. You can filter weekly. You can filter however it is that you think. I'm going to go ahead and clear that and filter so that we see all of it. Okay. 
you have all this information here. So a, a lot of our schools, what they do is in order to make sure that kids are continuing to move ahead in their path is have a look at total number of unique lessons completed. So unique meaning that they are brand new lessons that a student has seen as opposed to total completed, which could mean that they might have repeated some lessons. Um, so these are two columns where you definitely want to have a look, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing at home. And also to make sure that they're not stuck, because really, you know, that's what you're trying to do as a teacher, even though you don't necessarily have the student in front of you. So another place where I really ask my teachers to look is average scores here. You want to have a look at anybody who's not really doing so well. So anybody who's maybe in the 70s, and sometimes they're even worse, this particular class has pretty good scores, but let's just say that this 79 here is lower than it really is. To the right-hand side, you're going to have the total number of lessons completed versus assigned. So this student has five out of 60 lessons. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. When I click on that, I'm going to see where my student is getting stuck. So to the right-hand side, you're going to see with an X or a green check mark, X meaning they didn't complete the lesson, green check mark meaning that they did complete the lesson. Um, but you're also going to see score and how, how, time, how many minutes they played. So main, you can see main idea details. The student had a 60, a 65, a 73. So the student was really struggling with main idea details um, until they finally got 100, which is awesome. They finally knocked it out of the park. But if, for example, point of view, you see that they're having a hard time here, you have the ability to edit a student's path. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click on my back arrow and look at that kiddo again. So this kiddo here was, it was a student here, Franklin Garcia. If I scroll to the right of the page, I can edit his path. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on ELA Edge. And you can see here, again, everything is timestamped and it'll tell you how many times they played it. If they're continuing to have like a really hard time, so point of view one, they're not doing well, you can go ahead and unclick that from being assigned and scroll to the bottom of the page and click on save changes and that lesson will automatically disappear off this path. Um, so this is a really good place to go and just have a look. If they're frustrated, there's no point. Once they retest again, if they're still missing the concept, it will be reassigned again anyway. So um, it gives you that flexibility as a teacher to really have you know, deeper insight as to what kiddos are doing and having a hard time with. Um, so I wanna take the time to thank you for being with us today and for watching this webinar, uh, this uh, tutorial. Have a great day. Thank you again for watching.